What is up, Madden 25 gamers? Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be discussing how we like to blitz from zone coverage in our 46 normal uh, formation. And we all know that in order to play defense in Madden 25, it is important to be able to blitz from zone and man defenses. So uh, what I'd like to do is go to the 46 normal formation because that's the formation we're using this week. And uh, it doesn't really matter what play we do, but uh, the play I like to do it from is the cover three or the cover four or the cover two, just all the standard plays like that. So for this example, we're going to be using the cover three. So what we want to do to send pressure out of the zone is we want to base a line, we want to spread our defensive line, we want to globally blitz our left of screen outside linebacker um, on the screen, so the right of screen outside linebacker on your depth chart, so blitz him. We're going to spread our linebackers. You see that they're going to kind of fan out a little bit. And then the only thing from there that we need to do is we need to make our coverage adjustments because what good is a blitz without a proper coverage up behind it? So what I like to do is take this left of screen defensive tackle, drop him into a quarterback spy. I like to take this right of screen defensive tackle and, man, and um, drop him into a hook zone. Then I like to take this right of screen defensive end, man him up on the slot receiver or the tight end. If they don't have either of those, then I will just drop him in a man assignment on the running back. And then I like to take this linebacker here, uh, Curtis Lofton, drop him into a curl to flat zone to kind of shore up that seam over there. And then I'm going to user control Jenkins in this kind of left slot area. And uh, you can man align and rebase line to kind of rebalance the zones out if you want to. Um, it's not that big of a deal in my opinion, but it, some people like to do that. Uh, but basically, guys, the only thing you need to do for the pressure is spread your line, re-blitz that left to screen outside linebacker, and you should get this kind of delayed kind of pressure off that left edge. You see how that kind of comes in. Now, oftentimes, more than not, it will come in untouched. Um, very rarely does it get picked up. So um, that's another thing that obviously improves with time, but... Watch here, you should see um, the pressure kind of loops in off the edge. So um, as far as 46 normal goes, there's nothing that I would say is very spe more special than this play. Um, this play is kind of your – you can live in this play literally all game um, because of the how good the coverage is behind it, how good the edge pressure is. So uh, let's take a look at this one more time. So we're going to base a line. We're going to globally re-blitz the, right, the outside linebacker on the left side of the screen, which will be your right outside linebacker on your depth chart. We're going to spread our defensive line. We're going to spread our linebackers. Now, you could spread your linebackers and then re-blitz, and it, it, you know, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, but anywho, uh, and then like I said, in order to make this blitz, you see here this five-man version. Let's just show you the five-man version. So right at this point, the blitz is set up. And you should be able to, you see it gets that pressure off the edge. You see that. But what I like to do is try to get the best coverage possible from my pressure. So if you have time to make these coverage adjustments, I recommend them. But it's not it's not 100% uh, essential for the pressure to work. So anyways, uh, so anyway, back to what our setup was. Baseline, re-blitz that linebacker. Uh, after you spread, spread the line, spread the linebackers. Re-blitz that linebacker on the left. Quarterback spy, this defensive tackle on the left side of the screen. Drop this uh, guy Bunkley here into a hook zone. Then take Hicks, uh, your right of screen defensive end, drop him in a man assignment on Nick Toon, this right of screen slot receiver or tight end. Um, and then you have a couple of options here. I like to curl flat this linebacker and kind of basically just re deep blue Jenkins in this area right in here. Um, another thing you could also do is drop Galette into a deep zone. You can get so crazy with your coverage adjustments, but you see how we can drop those guys into any zones we want. So might as and there you see the pressure come in off that left edge. And uh, oftentimes it, it's it's even better and, and more consistent than it is being right now in practice mode. But uh, I can tell you from experience, this is a very good pressure play and uh, very good in real uh, gameplay. And there you see the pressure kind of starting to come in and you see what I'm getting at with that zone blitz. But guys, this is the foundation that I built the 4-6 de defense uh, around this year. So, um, and then it's not as good off the right edge, uh, but we can try it. Uh, base the line, spread your defensive line. You can spread your linebackers if you want to to keep the same look, but you're going to re-blitz uh, Kenny Vaccaro here. And then basically you're just going to do the same adjustments just to another side of the field 
And so the only problem with this is Kenny Vaccaro's in a really weird spot. You actually have to press to get him to go to the right spot. And you see it's it's just not as consistent. You still get the two man rush, but it's not it's just not it's it's not really worth your time like the right edge one is because sometimes that right edge one is gonna come in free. Now one other thing to note is when you re if you re blitz guys, like manually wanna re blitz guys, so say you're setting it up out of like a, a play like weak blitz or something that may not have the lineman on the stock straight down angles. Look at this right of screen defensive end. You see it? Watch me re-blitz him. Watch his blitzing. You see how it is like this? I re-blitz him, it changes. It's going inside a little bit more. So that may be something that we can use to get him and Makaro in free. You know, obviously here they get a little bit more downfield or whatever, but I'm just trying to point out things like that to kind of help uh, guide you guys in the right direction when you're lapping for these plays. But overall, guys, I, I recommend the first setup I gave, um, and, and I would just run the left edge. I wouldn't really... I mean, you could run the right edge, but it's, it, guys, again, it's just not that good. Um, but there you see that two-man pressure is really effective. Um, let's show you one other avenue I like to go for for the right edge here before we get out of here, just to kind of give you something. Um, but you can just re-blitz this linebacker, re-blitz this safety, re-blitz this defensive end, contain this guy right here. And I, I know this is a lot of adjustments, which is, again, why I say – you don't necessarily need that that right edge pressure, but this is a way that you can potentially get it. So basically, we're just gonna drop Jordan a man assignment, spy Jenkins, and then we're gonna take Jenkins, uh, this Jenkins, and put him in a curl flat zone just to kind of clear that up over there. And you see that we get that kind of edge rush. Kenny Vicar got caught up a little bit, but you saw that how that comes in. So we talked about the left side. Let's talk about the right side one more time. Base line. Press coverage, spread defensive line, spread linebackers, globally blitz the right of screen outside linebacker, which is Galette. He's actually the left of screen outside linebacker on your depth chart. Re-blitz Kenny Vaccaro. Manually re-blitz this defensive end here, Hicks. Quarterback contain Broderick Bunkley, your right of screen defensive tackle. Drop your left of screen defensive tackle and a quarterback spy and man up your left of screen defensive end. And I know this is a lot of adjustments, and that's why, again, I, I'm stressing because I think it's important because I don't want to hear from everybody, you know, you're, you're making a million adjustments, and how could this ever be, uh, you know, worth it in the game? And I really don't think it is. Uh, but I do want to kind of give it out if you guys want to go the extra mile and make all those adjustments. This is a potential pressure off that right edge. You see how it kind of comes in. So uh, that is left and right edge pressure from the 46 normal and uh, formation that we don't always get to – Discuss since Madden 11 was probably its best year or Madden 12, but uh, anyways, guys, that's 46 normal. And uh, really quick before I get out of here, I do want to suggest to you guys a blog post I posted this morning. Um, and uh, the video is actually going to go live on my YouTube channel later on today. But uh, it is the top five tips to improve for Madden 15. What you can do uh, today to improve for the next Madden. And uh, I hope you guys really read it. I, I think it's a very potentially powerful post. And, uh, and uh, hopefully it impacts you uh, as much as it's impacted me. Thanks a lot for your time. Hopefully this video was beneficial. Again, I do apologize for the right edge pressure having to have so many setups. But again, I just don't, you know, I, I want to make sure you at least have that option um, with decent coverage. So uh, let's show you that one more time and see if we can get it to work as good as we need it to. Let's see if it works. Nice. And you see we get that kind of quick rush off that right edge. But again, nothing to hang your hat on like the left edge um, because the left edge, in my opinion, is potentially the best, I would say the best blitz in the game just because it, you can do it from any play. Whereas the nickel strong blitz, it kind of requires a certain specific blitz angle. Um, so anyways, guys, thanks for your time. And uh, again, I hope this video is beneficial. If it was, leave a like rating below. Thanks.